Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to walk you through covering an ottoman with a real stretchy fabric called scuba fabric. You see, my mother um, really fell in love with this chair and ottoman that I bought from Ikea. And then so for her birthday one year, I bought her another one of them uh, for her own house. Now, there's been a couple years now, and you'll see how awfully worn uh, this ottoman is. Now, it's not because she's an extremely dirty person. She's actually very clean, but she has six dogs and they jump all up and around and there's no removable cover on this ottoman. They're constantly on top of it, all over it. They slobber. And as you can tell, things just start to look bad. And, and because the fabric is just stapled to this particle board, well, you can't remove it. So I'm gonna make a cover today that will go over this and give her away something she can take off and wash and still keep a decent looking living room in her house so that when guests come over, they see something beautiful rather than this uh, this stained red fabric. So uh, join me just a moment down here at the cutting table and I'll show you what we need to do to get moving. Okay, so for this project, we're gonna need something to a grid and a cutter. We're gonna need some type of a measuring tape so I can measure around the ottoman that we're gonna do. And we're gonna use some scuba fabric. Now scuba is a double knit fabric that has both polyester and spandex in it. Now you have to understand this is not neoprene that they make scuba outfits out of. That's a thicker fabric that's meant for insulating. This is a super stretchy fabric that just happens to also be called scuba. So what I've got is I've, I've got this ottoman, right? And I've got to look at this ottoman and decide how am I going to cover this? So there's a couple options that I could do. I could easily figure out a way to sort of make a something that just covered the entire thing, or I could figure out how to do it to where the cover came over. Maybe I took those legs off. Here's the problem. If I take the legs off and make the cover to go on, and I could, I could just screw these legs off, but then I've got to put holes in the fabric and then it's got to be put back on properly and stretched over. I just don't know that I want to do that. In fact, I also don't really want the dogs underneath this. And so in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a box of the fabric, real stretchy, and it'll suck to it real tight. And then in the bottom, there's going to be Velcro so that it can be ripped open, taken off. And so what I need are three pieces. I need a piece for the top. I need a piece that'll stretch around the entire outside and stitch to itself. And then I need a piece in the bottom that I put Velcro through the middle. So that means I will need Velcro as well. So let's start doing some measurements and I'll show you how to figure out what size to make this. So scuba is some super stretchy fabric. I mean, look how much stretch there is. It's really stretchy. And because of that, I'm gonna lay it out flat and I'm gonna mark everything before I start cutting stuff because it could get way out of whack otherwise if I don't. So what I'm gonna do is start marking out my sizing. Now I know I need a piece 15 and a half by 23 and a half, and then I'm gonna have seam allowances. So I'm actually going to just cut these the exact right size. I'm gonna cut that exactly 23 and a half by 15 and a half, and then I'm gonna use half inch seam allowances. So it'll take an inch off of the width and the length when I do it, and that'll give me my stretch to fit over my piece. So I'm gonna go ahead with a chalk pencil and I'm gonna mark out my 23 and a half on this distance. And I know I need 15 and a half <coughs> the other direction. So I'll go ahead and mark that line along there. It's even stretching as I draw on it. So you just have to be real careful. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my 15 and a half measurement here. Same at the bottom, 15 and a half. So I like, this is only on super stretchy fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and draw everything out and then cut it apart. You can also use like a, um, a light colored Sharpie. They have silver Sharpies and that kind of thing. And the next piece is 19 by 11 and a half. So I will measure up my 19 from the bottom. Here. And I need 11 and a half this direction. And 
again, it's sort of stretching the fabric out a little bit. So I'm going to be very careful. Try not to move your fabric at all. So this is the bottom piece. And in fact, I have to, I have to leave room for Velcro in here. So what I'm going to have to do is actually cut that 11 and a half in half, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do with this piece at the bottom that's supposed to be 11 and a half wide once the Velcro goes in, I'm gonna make two um, six and a half inch pieces, which would give me 13 inches, but then I can fold the edge and put my Velcro on. So let me make this 13, sorry, um, yeah, 13 inches wide and then cut it in half. So I've gotta go back and add my other inch and a half to that. You can see 13. So what I've done is I put my 13 mark right on that other mark that I had previously done and I can just draw it on. Again, 13 at the bottom here. And then that one will get cut in half. Good thing too about the chalk on this material is it comes off really easily. We just use a brush and brush it off, which is so easy. So those are those two. And then I will, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and again, because it's so stretchy and this is not like, this is not having to be like tailored, I'm just going to run my my cutting wheel on here, my rotary cutter. You could easily um, use a pair of scissors for this too, because you're cutting on a line that you've drawn. That's really up to you. And I'm doing this so I don't have to move all the rest of the fabric, because then I'm going to move the rest of the fabric and flatten it out and um, get my other four pieces. So this is going to be my top. Oh, it's going to look so good. I might even round the corners there before I actually sew it together. I may or may not. I haven't decided. Okay, now this one I've got to cut some off of the end here. And then I'm going to cut the entire thing in half. And I'm not as actually worried about how close I get to being in half, but I'll get close. All right, those are the two halves for our bottom. Set those aside. And now I'm gonna get my four pieces that will go, oh, these, these pieces, two of each. Now, one of the things I can do with that is I can fold this fabric in half if I wanted to and just cut two at the same time if I felt like it would stay flat. I don't know that it will, so I'm gonna maybe not do that. But if I was real impatient, I could do that. Remember, these are gonna be at a funky angle. Now, I need 23 and a half by 15, then with an angle cut off right here. See, 23 and a half by 15 and a half, and then we're gonna cut the angle down at the bottom. So I'm gonna first mark it out, mark out the 23 and a half this direction. Which worked. The 23 and a half down here as well. Then I can mark those together. Now, interestingly, these are gonna be pretty much a very similar angle. So, this will be fun. I'm gonna go ahead and mark off, it's gotta be 15 and a half inches tall. That's the height of the ottoman. So I mark my 15 and a half inches tall for the height of the ottoman on each end. And I can line those up together. Okay, so remember though, it has to be, it's right now it's a rectangle, but it's gotta be that shape, right? And so to get this shape out of it, I have to angle those in, see? So how am I gonna do that? Well, the easiest way is to Find your center point, and 23 and a half is 11.75. Now I'll tell you how I did that. 24 in half is 12. 
and then I gotta take another half an inch off. And if I split that in half, I got a quarter inch, so I just take a quarter inch off of 12 either way, and I get my halfway point. That's how I do it in my head. And now I need this to be 19 inches across. So 19 in half, half of 19, well, half of 20 would be 10, and then I have another inch I have to split in half, so I split that to half an inch. So if half of 20 is 10, take a, a quarter of a half inch off of that, which would be nine and a half. You could also do the math of, you could say, well, um, 18 is, in half is nine, and then add your inch back, half of each side is, you know, would get you to nine and a half as well. All right, so I put that mark there, I'm gonna put a mark here on 19. And then what I know is I've got to line up those two lines. So I do from the corner here to that corner down there. And this gets us our angle. I'm drawing very lightly because this material totally wants to stretch. It's crazy how much it wants to stretch. Like it's stretching here where I'm trying to get the point together. All right, then we've got to do one that's 15 and a half inches wide, which I won't get out of. No, I will get it out of this. Look, I will get it out of this 15 and a half inches down here. I'm gonna change your angle a little bit so you can see that. So I've got to get a piece that is 15 and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches by 15 and a half inches that way. Well, that's already 15. that's already 15 and a half inches tall because it matches the other one. So if I can get 15 and a half inches this way, then I can hopefully get 11 and a half that way. So I'm looking down here and I basically, I can put my mark at 15 and a half where this line went. Find the zero mark down there, it worked. I can come up here and find my 11 and a half at this point, which works. Broke my, I broke my, my chalk. My chalk's almost gone. Okay, we'll see if this will work still. And then match up these two points. This one with that one down there. So basically I was able to get one going this direction and one going that direction. The part where it makes the biggest difference is right here where those two angles come out. <coughs> I get that one shaped that way. And then cut the fabric on this one going the other direction. And then look, there we go, two pieces. This is one side and one end. I'll do that again with another set and then we'll put this all together. So I've got all of the pieces laid out and you'll see there in the middle is the top. And then the sides are gonna come down and then the other, the front and back sides. And then there's the two pieces here that are going to wrap around the bottom with Velcro that I've added that'll be stitched on. This is super stretchy fabric. So here's one of the things. People will tell you you need to use a stretch needle or something else. You certainly can. I'm actually going to be stitching this and then serging it. And so I feel comfortable and I'm not trying to make this perfect. It's not a garment. It's a thing to go onto a an ottoman, so I'm not as worried about it, but if you are, please go invest in a stretch needle if you think you need that. It will make it easier to go through, but you know, we sew this all the time in my business. 
We use this for some of our products and so I feel comfortable doing it. So we're gonna start by adding all four of these pieces to the top. When I do that, I'll sew these two together and these two together. And then when I add the other one in, then obviously I'm gonna to need to stitch these two sides together. Before I do that though, I will take the top and the bottom and go ahead and add the Velcro to them, add them to make a unit here. So I'll go do that right now and then come back and show you what that looks like. So here's that unit sewn together. And because I did the Velcro on the inside, the next one, the Velcro will go here on the outside on the other end. So let's show we have. Let's uh, go ahead and put that one together. So I'm here gonna just fold a half, a quarter inch edge over so that I have a place to stitch my, uh, so that it looks pretty on the bottom when I do it. And I'm just gonna fold it over a quarter of an inch with my, just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is super stretchy fabric. You can, if you want to go in and iron something in. I just think that's maybe too much effort for something that's on the very bottom of the, the project and won't even be seen. You could, of course, serge this and then fold over just with the serge line. That would be good too. Now you have to be careful as you're sewing this that you're not stretching it way out. And because the other one, I sewed the other Velcro right in here over top of that, I need to sew the Velcro now on the other side so that they'll be able to reach across. So I'm gonna flip it over. I'll center the Velcro on here. And then go in and stitch it down. Look at all the pieces of fabric. The pieces of fabric like to catch into, or the pieces of thread love to catch into this Velcro. Now, remember the Velcro itself is not stretchy, but the fabric is. So um, you just have to guide it through and hope that the fabric isn't stretching too much. It just stretched a little bit in here, but again, this is on the bottom of the entire thing and it's not gonna be seen. All right. So you'll, you'll be able to see there, it's sort of, it sort of stretched it out a little bit. And now we have to sew the other piece of fabric on there. Remember, this is gonna be on the outside, on the right side. So in other words, I'm gonna put the other piece of fabric right on top of this. Make sure I have the right measurement that matches up. And sew down my half inch seam allowance. Remember I talked about half inch seam allowances. And then when it opens, it'll be a nice finished all the way down. So I'll line up these marks. Now I'm using a half inch guide on my machine. On the throat plate of my machine, there's marks. If you don't have that, you can use a guide and put it at the half inch if you want to. You don't have to use half inch though. I mean, that's just the measure I'm using. Now, if your fabric is stretching, you just wanna make sure that both of the fabrics are stretching at the same amount. You could pin this, of course, and it would help probably for you to pin it if you're less uh, comfortable working with stretchy fabrics. I'm just gonna pull the end here and make sure that the marks line up and then sort of I pull them both out a little bit and then let it relax. And there we go, that made the nice finished part all the way through. All right, let's take this back over and get it set up with the other units. Now what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did here. I'm just gonna sew these units onto each side of this, and then I'll come back and add these units to the entire thing and get ready to lay this out as this sort of cross shape, and then I'll show you how to stitch the edges together. So let me take these first. Be right back. All right, breaking this up into units makes it so much easier to sew together. So now I'm going to come back here and go ahead and sew this unit onto this one on this side. 
and then I'll come to the other side, but I'm gonna have to be real careful how I sew these together. And I'm gonna show you this in a moment over at the sewing machine. So come over there with me and I'll show you what we need to do next. So I have that larger unit there and now I need to add this piece onto the side of it. Now you'll notice it's gonna overlap over here on the sides, which is okay. What I need to do is really be careful of how far I come in to these points and I'm gonna sew just to the, the seam where it goes across there. So I'm gonna come in and be real careful of how I lay this out. And I also have to be aware of where the, the seams on the bottom are. And I actually want them to be out. I want the seam going this direction underneath. So I will probably go ahead and put a pin in that just to pull that fabric the other direction. See, on this side, I want that seam coming out to the outside. I'll do the same thing at the other end. Now what I'm gonna do is come in and actually make sure I start sewing where that, the seam starts. I'm using my half inch seam allowance. I'm trying to make sure I don't stretch either of the fabrics. And if I do stretch them, I stretch them at the same amount so that they're traveling together. Now, as I come down to this other end where that seam goes across, let me give you a better angle. So now I've finished all of the parts and all I have left to do is close up these ends where those bits of the elast or the uh, Velcro go together. These are the side ends. So I'm just going to uh, flatten that out, pop that together, make sure all these things line up and then I will stitch across that. And because it's so stretchy, you can kind of get away with stretching this fabric to get where you want it to go. It's all going to stretch once it goes on the ottoman anyway. Now, I had said earlier that I was going to use a serger for this. But, you know, scuba fabric doesn't actually come up. Like, it doesn't ravel. So I've decided I really don't need that. If I was worried about raveling, of course, I would want to do that. I'm gonna make sure I still have bobbin thread in here. Ah, I'm out of bobbin. Makes sense. I'm trying to figure out why it was uh, so easy to sew that last part. Now, I love this scuba fabric because it's so forgiving, especially for something like this, but it is important that you don't make it too drapey. So you, you have to get cut exact sizes or even smaller than your exact sizing. Otherwise, it's just gonna look ugh, not quite strong enough. And, uh, and I mean, I know in sometimes in our bodies, we don't want super tight fitting stuff, but on 
this kind of thing, you kind of do want it to be super tight fitting. You want it to really hug that. So now the other end, same way. I've got to, I got to find it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Same thing. I will make sure everything gets folded correctly. Now I'm going to do it with the, um, the Velcro side up so I can see where it is um, and make sure it gets all connected in. And to make sure those flaps flap out properly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, look at that. So now I've got this Velcro piece, you know, all the Velcro here in the middle. And I should be able to turn this whole thing inside out. Let's go over to the ottoman and see how it works. Well, here's the test. I have opened it up. I'm going to turn it inside out. The scuba fabric likes to hook to the stick to the hook part of the Velcro. I'm going to pull off any threads that I have left over. Turn this whole thing inside out. There's our piece, and we will put it on top of our if it fits. Oh, you know what? I may have to go in the side. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I made it big enough to fit over the top because that Velcro won't stretch. Uh-oh. Yeah, here's a really good example of doing this badly. So I'm gonna have to cut some of the Velcro out and start again. Got to cut enough Velcro out that it'll stretch. Well, I'm going to test this by cutting out a big section of the Velcro from the middle because I know that I can always come back. I know that the Velcro on the sides will still work. So I'm going to cut some of the Velcro out. What I'm doing is freeing up the material to be able to stretch in between that. Hmm. We're gonna see. may or may mm -hmm. not fit over. I do know what I did wrong and I know how to fix it. So let's start again. So what I've done is completely removed the Velcro, all of it gone. And I just put this as an envelope style that closes over. If I want, I can add a little bit of Velcro in the middle at the end to hook back, but let me just test it this way. I have the whole piece, it's inside out right now. I'm gonna pop it open, see if I can't get it in there. One side that way. Oh, remember it's nice stretchy fabric. So, 
one side that way. Now the top is sort of in the right positioning. I'll bring it down to the bottom, pull over the legs this way, pull that down. Pull that down and see it would have closed with Velcro had I done it to where the Velcro was sort of could stretch, but of course Velcro doesn't really stretch. And there we have our covered ottoman. Now, uh, there's gonna be some things that I do differently to it. I probably will come in here and just stitch a tiny piece of Velcro here and here, just to Velcro it together when it's done, or a button, or you could put something else in here, but I need this to be able to stretch to open up. So I can't do too much of that. And I'm gonna clean all of these threads and everything off of here. My goodness, it looks terrible. But there you go. That's the finished ottoman covered with this black scuba fabric. All right, that's it for this week. If you, uh, if you liked this, please like and subscribe to the channel when you click that thumbs up like button. It really does help my channel because my videos get seen by more people. It gets pushed out in the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it. That was a fun sort of way of us to learn together because I have never ever made an ottoman cover like this before. But uh, it was a lot of fun. So until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. All right, actually, you know, you can't even really see that underneath there.